Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good evening. Good evening. How are you folks doing? How are you doing tonight? How are you doing? I'm doing just fine. Just okay. Fine. All right. So we are here at another Bible study from the book of Ephesians. I want to get you ready because tonight's chapter is so uh, enlightening and it brings us to a place of power. If somebody's looking tonight about power, you're going to get some power watching this study tonight because this book is talking about one of the greatest forms of power that God has. And that's what we need to be concerned about tonight. So, in the book of Ephesians, we're going to be in chapter 5. Chapter 5 is such an exciting and challenging chapter of the Bible. It's going to challenge you. So get ready. Go get whatever you need to get. Uh, we're going to pray down God's anointing that gives you a chance to get your uh, item, you know, to get whatever device you're using for Bible study. You know, I look around, I'm, I meant to bring me a Bible tonight. I was going to actually use a Bible, and I didn't bring that Bible. But tonight, we got to have God's Word. This is Word Up Roundtable. It means, here, here's something free right now. Setting the Word above everything else in your life. So you can live a full life. That's why we said we're going back to that verse by verse study of the scripture. Turn to Ephesians chapter 5. I'm going to ask Pastor Matt to get ready to read that chapter, the first four verses. And what we're going to do first is I'm going to pray. We'll introduce ourselves and then we'll get started. Ephesians chapter 5. We're having so much fun with this book. I'm going to give a little introduction after I pray and then we'll move right into it. Let's pray. Those of you at home, join in with us. Pray with us. We need that full anointing. We can feel your power coming through the screen. Father God, we thank you tonight. Your word. Lord, there's people out there who don't know the power and the importance and that your word can bring into our lives. We have to get back to the understanding of realizing the anointing, the sacrifice, of all of the planning that went into your word. When we speak your word, things change. Yes, when we speak your word, mountains move. When we speak your word, healing comes. When we speak your word, peace enters our life. When we speak your word, your word tonight, God, and this word we're going to talk about is going to bring all of those things to pass. So I get ready because the word of God is coming to pass tonight. Amen. Amen. We're in the book of Ephesians, and let me give you a background. We've had so much fun because this book is highlighted in Acts chapter 19. In Acts chapter 19, in this book, they tell you how it was founded. Ephesus was on this uh, way that almost all of the travelers had to go by in Asia Minor to come into Ephesians. So Ephesians had, was a melting pot of all kinds of people, all kind of religions, all kind of pagan idolatry, all kind of thoughts. So Paul bringing the gospel, which was his charge to bring the gospel to the Gentiles, Paul had to figure out a way to bring this gospel into the lives of those who were talking and those who were preaching other religious idolatry. You're on time? Bring your chair when you're ready to start. We got one more panel member. We haven't even introduced ourselves yet. Joining us tonight, chair right there. And we're going to introduce you to our panel in a few moments. We were just getting started right now. And I'm giving you the background to the book of Ephesians. We're very uh, light here. We just make sure you understand. So he told us in this text that he's trying to get in chapter 1, we understand that, that God was making a family in Jesus Christ. A very new family that never been made. Chapter 2, that's the mystery. Chapter 3 is telling us how that mystery came to be. Then we found out the book of Ephesians is divided clearly into two texts. It's divided into two halves. The first three chapters are the theology and the understanding of what we've won in God. The last three chapters, chapter 4, 5, and 6, are dealing with the practicality. We started with chapter 4 last night, and now it's dealing with the practicality of that text. So I'm going to get, we're going to pick up chapter 5. And if you look at the beginning of chapter 4, chapter 5, it says this word, which any, anybody will tell you who studies the Bible, know this, it says, therefore. 
Whatever you see therefore, it's just that word that means, so because of what you just read, so because of what God says, this is what you do. So we're going to introduce ourselves, and then we'll go through. You can slide your chair a little bit that way. There you go. You're good. You guys are good. You're good. Just make sure we're all balanced here. All right, so uh, we'll start on the end. Can you introduce yourself? This is a new uh, Bible scholar to our team tonight. Introduce yourself. Good evening, everyone. My name is Nicole Evans, and I'm a minister in training here at Shiloh Baptist Church. So we have Sister Nicole joining us. Nobody looks for you. She loves the Word of God, so she's here just to give us that perspective. Of course, we have you, Pastor McKenna Douglas. Glad to be here. Good evening. We have you, Pastor McKenna Douglas. So she's still, you know, I used to go into the classroom, you run the class late, and you try to get stuff together. She just ran in here, so she's, she's still getting to get myself together late, Kim. And Pastor Matt. Associate Pastor, Pastor Gary Matt. God bless you. You know, sometimes people, when they do this stuff with the Word of God, they don't treat it like real life. And real life, real people got real stuff. So she had to work, she has a job, she just got here, she pressed here, she's here now. All of us, you'll find out shallow, we don't try to be phony. We let you know, you know, everything's not perfect. We set this up. So we know the most important thing is the Word of God. Pastor Matt, start us out in Ephesians chapter 5 tonight. Look at this powerful passage. Go ahead, Matt. Verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God. We got five verses for us. You got it. Go ahead. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear, dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God as a sweet smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness and covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become of sense. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor gesturing, which are not convenient, but rather give, giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, the idolater, have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. All right, wow. That's a mouthful. But this starts out, if you didn't get it, let me give you a theme right there to understand something. It's talking about really the power of love. Understand this. One of the, you, you want to look at, you know, we sometimes talk about uh, passages on the Holy Spirit. You know, passages on the anointing coming down. Passages on, you know, healing. And we think that's the power passage. None of that works without love. Mm -hmm. Without God loving us. Mm -hmm. And without us loving. So, all of those things that ended chapter 4, he came now and said, how do we do those things, the practical applications? He says, how we do it is we start off by being imitators of God as dear children. So, um, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think you hear when you hear them saying, be an imitator of God? Uh, Lakeem, what do you think you hear when you hear say, an imitator of God? I think of, I just can't be myself. <laughs> I just naturally, I don't think I have all the attributes of God. I have to learn them and work on them. But it's good that he gives an example that we should example. I like that. be like him. That's to start us off with love. If you want to have a go-to what love should look like, study God. So, so watch this, and then I'm going to get you in, Nicole. This is what you just said, because you just led us somewhere. Be, he gave us an example. So if you want to know what a Christian is like, he didn't say just adore God. He didn't say just worship God. He said if you want to really understand what your calling is, and here's the hitch, you can be like God. What I heard was, he said, I have the same power to imitate God. I did not have that in my flesh, but I have the power to imitate God. So it says, be imitators of God like dear children. What do you hear when you hear that, Nicole? Be imitators of God as as beloved children. I want to hear uh, be an uh, imitator of God is to be, um, I think as I work in an office, yep. and um, there's paperwork everywhere, and to distinguish the original from a copy of the stamp. Go ahead, girl. That's so, right. That's when it. I think about being um, a, a imitator of God is, is being a copy, a duplicate of him, but I could only get there by following his example wow. and working at wow. it. Wow. So I think uh, becoming that direct duplicate. So 
to the point where almost like the world knows that I am a follower of Christ because I am like, Because of what you do. That is heavy. Girl, we're going to kick you off the family. <laughs> Listen to what she said, though. What that's doing? She just said, and the example you gave is knowing the original from a copy. So saints don't have to be guessing whether or not they're living right. We have the ability to follow what God said we can do. And what do you, what do you hear, Pastor? As, as I, I'm listening to Paul and his writing, it's hard to imagine this writing is coming from a prison cell. It is something how when you write that love letter to somebody you prison care cell. about. Yeah. That it doesn't you could be in a dark hole. But that anointing, that, that joy that you have, something that empowers you. And during this transition from chapter four into chapter five, what I see him unfolding the mystery is purification. Purification. You're preparing us to live yeah. 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 And how yeah. we are to conduct our lives. How we are to yes. and, and so and he threw the term in as dear children. Yeah. So yes. I think about um, and not everybody and say they had parents to emulate, but also it because he threw a word in there, he said as beloved children. Here's what I know about that. Our job is not to police our parents. Our job is to love our parents. And even in some of the worst situations, parents will love you back. So here's what he's, I think what he's trying to tell us is, if we imitate anything from God, imitate that wow. love that God gives us. Now, we're going to open a can of worms with what you just said. Because to imitate God, 1 Peter 1, let me give you a scripture. I want you guys to listen to this. 1 Peter 1 15 and 16 says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Right. And watch this. Holy is scared folk. We don't even want to talk about a world of holiness. We don't want, I can't be holy. But the reality is, all holiness means is separate yourself. Right. Be different than other people. But when you hear God say, Be ye holy, and as I am holy. Watch this. Because the rest of that verse says, and it says, Conduct yourself as holy, as holy people, because I'm holy. So, what do you think God is saying when he says, be holy, for I am holy, or separate yourself so you can do the things that you, he just said, imitate me. How do you do that? I think Nicole said it, and Pastor Max said it, in us being imitators of God, there should be a distinction. Yes. They should be able to look at you and see God. So, that's really just my point, that there, there's him consecrating us, us separating ourselves it's just naturally going to come if you do it, if that's your intention, to like walk in the image of God and be good children. This is my example. This is really what I was thinking about. I work with people. I work with children. And I've seen children have some of the most difficult parents. Yes. You know, not loving parents, but still have those kids want to love. And they still have love, to love their for their parents. I mean, I've, I've experienced kids that have been raped by their parents, raped by their father, girls, but they still loved their father. Now, we have a good father. That's right. That's what right. kind of a good example? What kind of love should we show him? It should be a distinction. We, we should know something different about our father because of the love he showed us and how we want to love him back. That is really good because it talks about being respectful. So let's let's put this in the realm of you because what we try to do when we talk is, is get you to see something here. God says, if you want to live the power life, the pure life, be an imitator of him, the next part of that says, and walk in love. And watch this. That's where we, we turn. Because this is where, and Kimi, you let us into that. This is where you have a parent that loves. A parent that loves sacrifices. Come on, man. A parent that loves put you first, right? And he said, you have to walk. The word walk always means live. So living in love. I'm going to throw something heavy out of somebody. So God said, you can act like me. You can be like me. Separate yourself. But one of the ways you do it is walk in love. So, I want to hit y'all with something. Walking in love is not this gushy, oh, I just love you stuff. Let me hit y'all with something to show you about walking in love. Let's talk about unforgiveness. Let's talk about the reality of, uh, of forgiveness. Matthew 6, 14 says, now somebody out there need to hear me. I'm telling you that God has given you power through his love. And he told you to walk in love and you will fulfill everything he needs you to fulfill to walk in this mystery, to have his power. So one of the main things is you got to learn to forgive. Let me read the verse, Matthew 6, 14. If you forgive those 
who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. Is, Nicole, is forgiveness easy? No. <laughs> okay, it took me a minute to say this. <laughs> so, so, I mean, what do you, what do you mean? I want to answer this with you. <laughs> so, is forgiveness easy? Yeah, yeah. I mean, think about a real situation where you have to forgive, or, or we still, almost still learning how to forgive. Mm -hmm. I think forgiveness, um, when I think of forgiveness, I think of my life, is realize and recognize all the things that I need forgiveness for. So in the heat of the moment, you're like, no, I'm, I'm, yes, right, I'm right. upset. And at that time, you're just like, forget about it. Please, like, when you put please. things in proper perspective and you realize, wait a minute, I'm not all that clean myself. Wow. And I need God to forgive me. How can I look at you and, 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 and say, I'm not ever going to forgive you, but I expect God no. to forgive but, me. So that's, not, that's not your first thought. No. <laughs> yeah. In the moment, you're upset. Yeah, you're, you're yeah. Bless you in the way. And that heat of the moment can last a while, yeah, right? Oh, yeah. A while, yeah. yeah, right? So what are you doing here, Rick? Say, you're oh, unforgiveness. Oh, 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 but we talk about walking in love, right? Now, just another deal with unforgiveness that it can stunt your growth. Wow. It can prevent you from moving forward. You might have to it, it can stunt your growth and prevent you from moving forward. I, I remember, you know, Back in the day, when I wasn't saved, I, I kind of took advantage of somebody who lent me some money. Oh. And pastor, then I got saved and growing up in church, ushering and, you know, driving a van. And I couldn't move to that next level of ministry until wow. I made that wrong yeah. wow. right. Wow. And what stuck my growth is, I was wrestling with, with that person, forgive me now, after all these years. Yeah. And because I'm forgetting, right? Yeah, me, so I, to, yeah, yeah. Talk to them. Right? Because when, when I did approach them and gave them back what they what I got from them and what they deserve, I gave them more. I had prepared myself saying, I've been struggling with this moving forward. Yeah. That I gotta accept whatever he do to me mm -hmm. to get this thing right. Because it hinders you from moving for or being productive or a man or a woman of influence. So you can tell somebody who's listening to us that Maybe right now, unforgiveness in your life, first of all, it means you're not walking like God. That's right. That's right. Secondly, we know it's part of our human makeup. Let's be real. Yes, yes. With the same bunch of saints that don't struggle sitting on this stage, right? Okay. And the reality is we need to understand. But when it says imitate God, that's the key. Yep. The key is this book of Ephesians tells us God, no matter how bad our past was, no matter how you know, he took the worst of the worst and gave us grace. Yeah. And it's that grace you walk in. Oh, so when you don't for, when you don't forgive somebody else, what you're saying is you don't respect them as being one of God's children or as being human enough for you to forgive them. Now, my heart, as Nicole said, my heart is, is usually forgiveness comes out of the truth. Somebody heard it. Yes, yes, yes. It comes out of I was done wrong. When I, when I have this unforgiveness, it means I was done wrong and I, I can't look at you right now. I won't be near you right now. But what we got to remember now is we cut off that power of God coming in our life. In fact, as Matthew even made it clearer that that means sometimes we can cut off the next level God yes, wants to take us to. Somebody got to hear The next level God wants to take us to. You're going to let somebody who did you wrong hinder you when you know you have done God wrong, but God loves us anyway. So we got to learn how to forgive. What do you, what do you hear, Rakeem? I mean, I know you've been in some situations. Think about it. And it's been longer than it's been a week where you didn't forgive somebody. Oh, yeah. Uh, can we say a couple months? Can we say a year? I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I have been in situations where I couldn't look at the person I had to take to God. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Nope. I, I can agree with everything that everyone has said. And it's funny. And listen to everyone, a story came to mind. Um, I thought I had forgiven somebody. <clears throat> but forgiveness is a process. Just like love, there's levels and degrees of love. You know, love is many things. God is love, but mm -hmm. love is patient and kind and forgiving and long suffering and all those things. So in this case where I didn't forgive, well, I thought I forgave that person. But when I had to deal with them, Something came up in me, and it wasn't quite. I, I didn't realize I was too mad. Yeah. I still had feelings, and I don't know. I meant, I thought I was over it. Yeah. But when I came to that realization that something was still there, I thought about 
the epiphany I had when 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 I consider how God forgives. When He forgives, He puts it in the sea of forgetfulness. So it's not the the cliche I forgive you, but I'll never forget. It's I really need to forget what you did to me and move on past it for my sake, for your sake, for all of it, so I can be sincere when I do it. So it was my husband that called me on it, so casual. Wow. But when he did, you were responsible. When you get called out, when the Holy Spirit brings it to your remembrance, when you figure out I'm not quite all the way there, like Pastor said, I'm happy, but I couldn't look at you yet because I wasn't right and I didn't want to fake the funk. So I had to get right with it, but I would encourage you, when you, when you decide it is time for you to forgive, when you've accepted it, ask God to help you do it like he does. Some of you did not tune in here tonight to talk about unforgiveness. <laughs> you, you came here to get, but I mean, the Holy Spirit don't lie. He, he had you tune in. Because oh, here's the problem, too. How about when a person does it again? And they keep doing it to you. So you just hit the key when we talk about imitating God. How many know? I know I've hurt God's part more times than once. Matter of fact, I could probably add a. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday kind of thing in there. So if I'm going to act like God, I like what you said. If God, if the anointing in us gives us the ability to forget it by giving it to God, then we can move on. So if we're supposed to act like God by that. But let me give you one more. We talk about imitating God. Because I looked this up so we could be, so we could talk about the reality of this. Treating another reason, another way to imitate and walk in love is don't treat some people better than other people. Okay. Let, let, let's go to let's go to James chapter two. Let's look at that for a minute because I didn't write that down. Why don't you go to James chapter two? So I said, what does this have to be walking like God? When you when you uh, are partial in the way you treat people, then you find yourself. Does, does somebody have James chapter? Let me see chapter two. I'm sorry, chapter two, verse one. Let me let me let me read this. It says, my brother. Uh, I think I'm reading from ASB. Hold not the faith of our Lord. I like what he said. Don't have, don't try to say you have faith in God or Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For if they're coming to your synagogue, a man with a gold ring, fine clothing, and they're coming one also poor in bob clothing, and you have regard for him that wear the fine clothing and say, sit down here in a good place, and you say to the poor man, stand down there under my footstool. Do you not make distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen to me. I need everyone to hear this. If you don't start practicing impartiality, loving people because what they can do for you, loving people because of their titles, loving people because it'll make you look good, and you see someone sitting in church who has a need and you ignore them because they, they're not cute, they're not pretty, they're not smart, they don't have, you know, if, if you if you if you value all of those superficial things, you'll never be what God is. Because God chooses us, you watch this, on the basis of need. How many of us know that we all can get uh, you know enthralled or you know, go crazy over celebrities and over other things. And you know, that's how people get into cults because you want, here's what I tell people. When I'm, when you see me, sometimes my men, they'll say, well, we're, we're just a pair. Hey, don't. Now, I'm really not James Duncan. I like the fact that I work to be that, yeah. right? But I'm not so high and mighty wow. that I gotta walk around like that. When I'm with men and we, and we go, we just pump it up, we have a good time. I don't try to distinguish so people have to treat me different, you know, than someone else. Now, we get in certain situations, respect is due. That's right. You're going to respect my wife. You're going to respect my kids. You know, you're going to respect who I am in the situation. But when we just kicking it, we need to stop feeling so high and mighty that we can treat other people differently. Everybody know what I'm talking about? Does anybody feel what I'm saying? I mean, what you, have you seen how, uh, let's talk about it one more time, church hurt. Well, what, do you, what do you hear, Nicole, when you hear church hurt? Because it happens with individuals. What do you hear? Uh, when I hear uh, church hurt, um, I hear offense. Um, wow. Okay. Some people are a little more easily offended than others. And just something that's going on within them. You can be well-meaning mm -hmm. and don't say wow. offense to yep. almost anything you say. Um, but church hurt is real. I mean, it's 
world, human, um, but I know for me, I moved past church so, experience as a kid. So you moved past it? Yes. Yes. Um, and it was well-meaning. Well, I felt that was well-meaning. There were ministers. There were people with titles. You went right and, and There were people with titles in the church, but um, eventually I learned to move past it. The church hurt is real. And I Absolutely. think sometimes we have to uh, be mindful of how we're talking to people, how we treat people, what we say. It's not what we say, but how we say it. So a lot of times that, that hurt comes from the fact that you either ignore them, or you talk down to them, or you you did something that where they felt disrespected. Yeah. Have you ever been hurt in church? I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry, but can you? <laughs> sorry, I didn't answer. You ever, everybody, can you? I mean, what what happens when people you know talk down and don't respect you? Well, well Pastor, we, in church you have a, a, a higher expectation of there you go. people here. Yeah. You do. So you yeah. expect them not to get the same. Even though we say we're human, we. You know, People gonna mess up. We all sin, fall short. We say all that, but we do have a different expectation from the people who say yep. and have been here a while and say they belong to Christ when they don't demonstrate any type of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that can be very painful when you open up your heart. And that's the part you're looking for. That's that, the part you're looking for that support. You open your heart to somebody who crushes it. Yes, sir. Now, now Nicole gave us the ultimate, and that is all you can do is worry about. Us doing this, right. I gotta love you impartially, and I gotta learn when you don't. I gotta go past it. Yes, I mean that, that's just the best advice. If you're sitting there now, hindering your blessing, hindering your spirit because someone else didn't do what they were supposed to do, you gotta learn how to get past it. We better move away and get too much further on this text. Go ahead, verse two. Read, read the part. Uh, the, the next verse, please. We can't read the next I'm verse. Back to Ephesians. Go back to Ephesians. Back to Ephesians. I thought we was on verse. No, we didn't. But we didn't. Well, we didn't even talk about verse three. Oh, yeah. Let's go back to the, 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 let's do let's do verse three and four real quick. You want to read it? Yes. Okay. But and I'm reading for the from the King James. Mm -hmm. Verse three. But fornication and all. Oh, go up. Uh, we didn't even cover the rest of that. What, what does it say before that? Wait. Uh, and uh, walk in love too. Okay. That's where we started. Yep. And keep going. <laughs> before that, go ahead. Which one do you want me to read? Three. <laughs> I think three is where you go. Okay, that's where I started. Okay. Fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be one snake among you, as become as saints. Four. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient. All right, let's, let's stop with this. Let's deal with let's deal with that. Okay, so now you walk in love. This this is getting heavy now. Mm -hmm. Now it's talking about spirits. That separate you from God. It's talking about earthly, earthly um, actions, and it's really spiritual. Earthly, when you line yourself up with what worldly expectations are and what fleshly pleasures are, you leave God. Now, this is tough because all of us are in the flesh. All of us are. Uh, you know, when, we, when you when you look at the end of verse two. It says when you give God an offering of a sweet smelling sacrifice, okay. right? Think about that. Uh, I can tie this in. All of these sin offerings were always done outside the camp. Whenever they did sin offerings in the Bible, they were offerings that you offered for sin. So they weren't sweet, sweet smelling savors to God. But when you did the meal offering inside, and there was other offerings you did, that when they went up in God's nostrils, because the person who did that offering was an offering for sin, they were just sending up a thank you to God. Preach, Pastor. So what, what God loves is when you come into his presence, not because you sinned, but you come in his presence because you need him. You come in his presence, and that's a sweet smell. So here now we're talking about the foulest swelling of all, because when you see the word but, Fornication. That's where we get our word for pornography from. It's the word in the Greek, pornia. Yeah. Fornication is all uncleanness and covetousness. Let it not be named among saints. So let's talk about that. Anybody? Anybody want to jump on that? It's, it's like the. You're showing us what we need to unlayer from us. So first we like fornication. Yo, oh yeah. The fornication, please. Fornication, please. Wait a minute. I heard about that. Oh yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I heard somebody say, keep it real. <laughs> okay. And, and keep it real that there, there's a lot of things this flesh really enjoy. Mm -hmm. That's not God. It's not uh, a sweet smell of savor in God's nostril. And we enjoy those things. But what I see here is 
the unlayering of things he's telling us to stay away from. Stay away from. Because, you know, we put on the old chapter um, four, we was putting on that new man. New man. And now we transition into that bride, which we're going to talk about later. Yeah. We're becoming something else, and we're purifying ourselves, pre preparing ourselves for what we are to be. Oh, that's good, yeah. So, we should, we, we're peeling away stuff that appeals to us. So, he talks about one thing is university of people, right? Mm -hmm. And that is sex. All of us up here have been married, married. So we all, all of us up here have legally had a marriage bed, mm -hmm. right? Yes. 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 And all of us up here probably had some illegal. Yeah. I'm not even ready to hit on that one, <laughs> right? But we want to point out you guys out. But the reality is, he says fornication and all uncleanness yes, and covetousness. I like the fact that he turns covetousness, which means uh, something I want, yeah. something I cut. Yeah. I want that. Yeah. You know, that's what happened said. Right. I want that. Right. He said, you turn fornication into just, I want that, mm -hmm. and I'm going to do that. So what do you hear when you see God saying, now, uh, we, we're going to talk to the young person on our panel tonight, the young girl, uh, Sister Nicole, but you might go tight, but uh, when you hear, when you, I mean, as a young person, I tell you, I struggle more with my youth than I do now with, with that, right? Oh, I do. Okay. <laughs> we got a prayer for you. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead, Nicole. Go ahead, Nicole. Go ahead. Do you wake up? Do you wake up? I hear... Well, then no, you have to live that. I mean, we have to live that. When you hear God say, but fornication and all uncleanness comes. Don't let it be named among you. It lets me know that what I may want is wow. not what's good for Go me. Go ahead, bro. Um, there's a lot of things that I might want. It's not just sex. Mm -hmm. Just anything. Yeah. Um, even if it's good. I, this is something I'm learning now. Just because something's good doesn't mean it's God. Wow, that's uh, good. And that's good. same applies with sex and everything else. I might see something that like I might want that. But I feel like God is telling me now, if you go there, yeah. there is consequences. Yeah. And I have been there and suffered the consequences. Wow. But in learning that not everything I want is good for me. So and, so now we're talking about a walk. Mm -hmm. And you go ahead and pick up right there, McKean. Okay. I like what she just said. So just go ahead. Back on what yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. And Paul talks about it. Just, just We have the right to do all these things. We can do all of them. Oh. I can fornicate. I can yeah. unclean this. Come back. But all things are profitable. All things are going to benefit you. So God is such a loving father. He gives us a hands up. Sex is good. You didn't know that's not the problem. Fornication, which is that sex that is not in the union and the covenant and the covenant of marriage. Mm -hmm. that, that that's sin against your body. There's differences between things that you do that are just, I don't know, sins outside the body, and then there are sins against the body. You taking your body and just giving it to anybody. That hasn't made a oath to keep you, wow. to love you, to love to guard. It is sacrilegious. It is dangerous. It's it's offense to God and it's offense to you. So he's a good father. He warns us of sin. Same thing with Colin. You set yourself up. You envious of what she has. Or I wish that was my wife. The grass isn't always greener. I wish that was my girl. I wish that was my car. Yeah. All of those things, those one things. Over wanting the love of God and walking it out and then being named. Because when you get called out as a, okay, I have to be safe. When you get called outside of your name because your sexual immorality. You call that God be called outside. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you quote unquote church, when you get called out because that's what you, you do. You have to turn that part of your life over to God because you still love it that much that you put it over God. So God, Paul, and I'm going to let you jump on this aspect, but Paul got tough here. Don't let it be named. Don't let it be a part of who you are as a believer. And you just went there where I go and I tell people uh, that when you have sex with someone, God set this thing up that you're sharing souls. You're not just sharing bodies. Every time I have sex, I give myself, because sex to God is a oneness of spirit. So every time I give myself away, what I'm doing is I'm depositing a part of me that I won't have next time because I've given it away. Wow. So there is a, and you know, we talked about before about soul ties mm -hmm. in a dark way. Mm -hmm. You can get your, that's why sometimes you say, why somebody want a bad boy? Why you want that girl? You know, she ain't right. Your soul, spiritually, can get tied to the spiritual seduction 
of the sexual act itself. And that's why after the act, you may not even want to be with that person. But then when you get that rise one more time, now, now, well, let's talk about round 11 o'clock. <laughs> so, round 11 o'clock, we're fighting. That's why when people fornicate, it's not because they don't have a husband or wife. I know we cover it in adultery, but fornication covers all of the sexual sins. It's because they are selfish and have not learned to control their spirit for that for that desire. So when you said covetousness too, but Paul said, don't let it be named. God said, you miss me when you let that sexual desire override what I have good for you. I'm, like, I'm sorry, you were going to say something. I hope that messed you up. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. I'm just, for, for one moment, we could just think and give God praise to wow. by how blessed we really wow. are. Mercy. That we have been revealed this mystery. Yeah. That now we can understand the state that we were in. Yeah. Because once yeah. We, when we were blind and ignorant, we didn't really know how bad off we are. We, 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 we couldn't define who we were, good right. or bad. But this mystery has been unfolding right now that we're teaching. Now we have to understand and know what we need to keep ourselves from and the danger of. Wow. wow. That's the opposites. Mm -hmm. Love, lust, mm -hmm. um, holiness, uncleanness, covetousness. Sir, I said, God, I'm surrendering it all. I want you yeah. more than I want anything else. So, 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 let's talk about then the spiritual part. That's where we really want to go. We're telling you that you can live above stuff. God's telling you how to do that. And I love your, your example of the onion. We're stripping layers off of ourselves. We're learning as we go. But you just hit on what Paul was writing from. Remember that in the city of Ephesus was the temple of Diana. Right? Our teams, right? Mm -hmm. And we know that how they please their God was sex. Yes. God is saying how you please me is don't have sex. Mm -hmm. So the devil says how you please me is have sex. So what happens? I'm going to say this. I'm going somewhere. We're going to take the next verse. We're going to get nowhere. The, if I get mad at God or I get to the point that I'm angry about something or the enemy takes me, the first thing I do is revolt against God's rules, and I run back to the other guy. Think about that, right? Uh, if I'm mad at you, I'm, I'm angry at you. So in my holy state, I don't cuss you out. What I throw that way, and I get that other guy going, I tell you what I really think. Save them all, right? Because you just said those opposites. So God is saying, you got to make sure you don't be fornicating because it's more than just you having sex and sleep back home and nobody caught you. You just damage your soul. You just damage your heart. All right, and then it said, verse 4, he said, Nor filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which is not befitting, and giving thanks. So, filthiness. 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 So talk about that for me. What do you think, Sam, when he says filthiness? Um, I used to have a hard time about this scripture. And it's funny because I like to play on play around. And I, I call a pastor... Um, Brad, I called Cato on the scripture one time because I was clowning and I got convicted because there's a difference between laughing with someone and laughing at someone. Okay. And as it relates to filthiness, well, let's talk about foolish talking in a minute because okay. I, I want you to understand. You just said the difference. God is not just talking about joking. Matter of fact, the Bible says laughter do it good like medicine. Mm -hmm. But you named the distinct difference. Uh, if we if we talk about filthiness or foolish talking. It means when it's time for you to be speaking things that uplift, speaking things that uh, bless people, speaking things that are, bring gratitude to God, you talk foolishly and just go around in circles. And now you find yourself and wonder why you're not blessed, but you spent half the day talking stupid instead of focusing on God. And you're going to say something about filthiness. I'm sorry, I cut you off because I was thinking about foolish talk. I don't want people to, because some of the saints don't laugh. And they don't understand. God loves laughter. But it's when you just talk foolishly about stuff you don't know. Go ahead. With filthiness, I don't even think we need to, I almost want to say elaborate, because everybody has an idea. When you say filthiness, everybody can picture what, they, you know, what it could possibly be. Mm -hmm. uh, so, well, we think about. You said we don't have a chance, and I want you to jump in here, but Marcia and I, I, I want to name out the top movie here. You know, everybody knows we love the movies. But we have walked out of several movies. 
several movies we loved. We walked out of them because it got too filthy. I didn't say anything to anybody. It was almost like it wasn't even cute. We were both sitting there, and by like 20 minutes into the movie, I mean, just the sexual perversion, the cursing was not on a level. You know, sometimes you go to a movie, and they have a little bit in there, you know. But this movie was so... It, it was just, everything was just point toward just darkness okay. and danger. It was, it was not pointing, you can go get, get that mic. So it was pointing toward, it made us want to leave, and we almost, what was really cool about it, we both kind of turned with each other and said, you ready? Now we had just spent 26 bucks, yes, right? right? <laughs> but have you ever felt, that's what he's talking about, an attack on your soul, when a, a joke, talk about work. A joke is so filthy, mm. and it's not something you want to hear, or something be around you. Uh, let me get the quote first. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt that it was an affront to who you are as a believer because the conversation got too filthy or the situation got too filthy? Yes, it made me uncomfortable. It'll, it'll make your spirit just... Ugh. <laughs> like, I, got, I, I have to... I have to, and even if you try to sit there and say, you know, I can do this, and God said, you got, you got to go. Mm -hmm. you, and you can fight it, you can quench it if you want to, but there's plenty of times where I've been places or I've been around at work and things are being said and, you know, I brush it off and it keeps being said, it keeps being said. I'm like, okay, you know what, let me go take a walk. Yeah. Because my spirit was so bothered. And you don't want that in your spirit. Yep, yep. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. Like, it, it's sad. I can't even turn on the radio. Because sometimes I'm like, you know, there are times where I need to check out a long day at work and, you know, I need to flip on something that's just planned. But I've had to turn it off because I'm like, I cannot entertain that. I can't put that in my spirit. I don't need it to come up in my dreams while I'm sleeping. I don't need to slip up and say it in conversation. But you know, like you said, it's uncomfortable. It doesn't feel right. It's like, I can't do this. I can't. I just feel... My view is, I believe Paul's talking to believers. Yes. And some of that filthy and, and stuff that we should be saying can actually be done in church. Oh, that's wow. When, when somebody comes into church, their heart is open, they're hurting, they're seeking for something. And we don't take advantage of that opportunity to lift them up through the Word of God. We can be doing the same thing when we know what's right. When we know the right thing we should be doing and we choose not to, to rather be joke, joking or try to be humorous, they're vulnerable right now and we miss the opportunity to lift somebody up. And, and you know, I was, I was actually, uh, what's the right word? I had all of my young adults and we talked, you know, things got out of hand. Cause they, they, wanted, they wanted to say what they wanted to say. But what was really funny that night was the one thing I did take out of that is because I'm old school, so I come from old school songs, right? And so I may do this. And one of the young ladies said, well, Pastor, one night, one day in church, you start naming Drake, and you went into naming all these rappers, mm -hmm. and because of the songs that were out there, but you guys had songs in your day like that, uh -huh. so I wanted to ignore that. And I'm riding down the road, and all of a sudden, I hear Ozzy Brothers, it's your thing, <laughs> do what you want to do, I can't tell you. It's like, it's like I was desensitized. Now, it may not be as explicit, but all they were saying is that we all need to be able to understand when we hear things and not just point out, you know, one generation or something. So we all need to know, and I think you said best, Paul was trying to show us that we can't, you know, walk around being a fornicator and, and all this other stuff. But look what it says. For you know this for a surety. I like it. You know when you're doing wrong. You know. <laughs> don't even act like you don't know. Don't act like, a, oh, uh, sometimes in church you preach on my toe. Oh, Pastor, you're stepping all on my toes. No, you're stepping on your own toes. You shouldn't have been doing that. And the only reason I stepped on your toes is because you knew you shouldn't have done it. We're going to move down to verse 6 because here, no, we're going we're to stay with this verse. I'm going to get to the, the bottom part of verse 5 where it says, No covetous man who is an idolater. Uh, for this we know for sure that no fornicator or unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater. Wow. All of those go together. All those sins, fornication, uncleanness, covetousness, idolatry, have any inheritance in the kingdom of God. Let's talk about that statement because wow. that's a heavy one. What do you hear? What do you think Paul is saying when he said you don't have an, look at the word, let's read the Bible, yes, an inheritance in the kingdom of God. Go ahead. Anybody, what do you think he's saying? 
I know you did. Go ahead. I did. Go ahead. I, I, I see some, you know, you know better and you choose not to. You, 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 it's laid out for you that it has no inheritance in the kingdom of God. Uh, God has laid out this plan. It made a way for you, opened a door for you. You know it. You know it's nobody else can. You didn't do it on your own. And then you know in this mouth and still choose not to. Okay, so so let me let me say this kind of kind of set up here. So the word inheritance, right, is our promises. Yeah. I want to first tell you what it's not saying. It's not saying you're not going to heaven. No, no. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about when Jesus Christ said uh, in the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, right? So here's what he's saying. Inheritance means promises, the covenant. So, if you do these things, you can't get my promises. That's heavy. You can't, if you're out there doing that and your soul gets taken with this, you have no part in my kingdom. I heard one preacher say it this way, that if you're hooked on pornography and you allow that to invade you where you make it a part of your life, you come to church and sit in the church Right now, you are not fit, and they use the word fit, to receive the promise in the word that's being preached. Because you have allowed yourself to stand in a state that's other than the state of what God said. Look at the word. It tells you the kingdom of Christ and God. Yeah. So what were you going to have with that? I'm just thinking, you missed the whole point. Mm -hmm. You missed the you miss out on the benefits, the of, benefits God's of God's kingdom. And he didn't just say, you know, and I'm going to use what I see, whore monker. You do. It, it, it wasn't if if you just, you had an experience. He, you're the epitome of, you are a whore monker. You are an unclean person. Now you need to understand. You need to do a covetous You are a covetous man. You are an idolater. You are the epitome of, that's your world. That's your life. You're missing out. On all the benefits of the kingdom, knowing God, and just knowing God, missing. Wow! Miss out. Wow! Promises. So, somebody here tonight we're talking to. You say, well, and that's the next verse tells it. Look at where it said, "Let no man see." There's people who are around. Oh, ain't nothing wrong with that. Them church folks don't know what they talk about. I said, let no man deceive you, right? So people walk up to you and say, well, man, ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with a little bit of, you know, Bobby Brown and what you want to do. And people will, will say that with a straight face. Everybody human. You got to believe yourself. Right? I know I'm getting too heavy here. But everybody, everybody, they won't forget what you did. I really am. And they ain't no better than you are. Go ahead, y'all. Have your fun. They old now. I mean, people will tell you everything the word of God. to get you to not do what the word of God said. Now, your generation, and they're messing with the code right now for a minute, because we're living in a, in a state right now where, and you can you can correct this, but I believe that a lot of people in your generation don't have the benefit of a culture that honors God. Now, let me explain that. When we were growing up, there was a culture, even though we were out there sinning, we did just many sins as anybody else. But the culture honored God. You know what I mean? There was... God was looked at as uh, a, the place to go when the bottom fell out. It's not like that now. It's like the world is saying everything is just as good as anything else. Do what you want. Do what you want. So what do you hear your culture saying when they... I'm talking about how people just smooth it over with excuses or comments. Have you heard some of that? You know, in the air. So like what kind of things do they tell you? you guys, that's how we keep... That's how they keep their uh, justification of how they're living. So what do you hear? What do you hear? God will forgive you. Um, as you said, God will believe yourself or God will forgive you. When you're young, live your life now. You can do that church stuff when you're older. Wow. Yes. So, so with your commitment to God, because we commend you, we, we've seen your commitment, What? how does that fly with you, with your commitment that you're trying to make with God? How does that fly with you? With me, initially, I struggled with it. I struggled with Great. Um, I'm still struggling at times. Amen. Because you do, what, you do want to do what you want to do sometimes. Um, for me, just, I got tired of repeating the same wow. cycles. <laughs> and it's just like, our generation likes to blame a lot. Wow. But we have to take responsibility and accountability for our actions, right? We say we grow old, so then take responsibility and accountability for your actions. And I sat there and I thought, like, 
Why do I keep going through the same thing? Oh, Girl, they ain't gonna like you after they hear this. You, you right. let me yeah, out. Good. I don't care. <laughs> but but I, I sat there, I had to ask myself that question. It's like, well, you, I guess you didn't learn the lesson the first three or four or five times you went yeah. here. So you just get tired of, of living this unfulfilled life. And it's just like, just for me, it was just like, you get tired of being sick and tired, and it just has to change. Wow. You know? Wow. It takes a toll on you most. So, so you just said several things. First of all, it's not for selling. You find that out after repeat. And let me tell you something. I asked you to talk about two generations, but all of us do the same thing. <laughs> all of us get to the point where it's like, I'm beating. No, stop, God. I mean, because we we have this thing, if we don't stay, and we, oh, we got to get to that verse. We gotta, oh, we got to get to that verse. So if we don't get close enough with God, we find ourselves in this position where we're going back and Fourth, and that's what this text is telling us. This, this is a heavy chapter. This book, he's telling us, first of all, you know, the world doesn't want to talk about it uh, for, because you just said it. they want to do sexually, I want to do my thing. Um, you can't tell me how to drink, how to dress, how to live. Y'all, y'all too corny. Da, 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 da. And when you find yourself there, they'll try to convince you that you don't need God. But he said, come with the wrath of God. That's what we just talked about. I'm scared of the wrath of God. I don't like tossing and turning in my bed every night or getting up knowing, feeling. Anywhere I felt like this, I'm not worthy because of the stuff I'm doing in secret. I know we're saying too much here. But when you do this stuff in secret and you get out into the open, it makes you feel like, and if you get to the point where you don't feel anything and you can cover it up, wow, you just lost it. He said, but this happened with the sons of obedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Verse 8. But can you take verse 8? Talk about that. For ye were sometimes darkness. Hmm. Wow. For ye were sometimes darkness. Mm -hmm. But now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. All right, let's talk about that because we just, we, we, we it's a progression. He talked about the wow. things that really affect our flesh. So we started this out, walk like God. Mm -hmm. He said, if you ever want to have success and have power, walk like God. And we talked about that walk is a love walk. Mm -hmm. So loving God first and loving others the way God loves them. And then he talked about our personal keeping of our vessel. And now he gets down to this, make sure you know who you are. Now. Go ahead. This is blowing me away because yeah. I was looking for a word that is not there. Wow, that's what he said again. Yeah. For ye were sometimes, I was looking for the word in. He said, darkness. Yeah. Ye were. You weren't just in it. You were darkness. Wow. But now are ye light. Wow. That is so powerful because what, what I hear is personal relationship. God is not worried about when it all boils down to it, what other people said, what other people did, how they treated you, who hurt you, it boils down to, I don't care what other people say, what do I say as God is saying? What, what am I saying? And he's saying, you're so far from me. When you're out there doing your own thing, you're not just in darkness, you are. Darkness, the epitome of. But God says, he wants us to be children of the light. I see the distinctions here mm -hmm. again and again, and he's got to keep clarifying it. I can see layers of change. We all get translated into his law. It's like we are walking in his righteousness. It's a process. So we can't be like the world. Not at all. There has to be a, you, said, you see a distinction. Yeah, I take verse 10. Verse 10. Jesus. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Okay. Proving. That's, that's, that's where I want you. You're going to do 11, Nicole. Go ahead. Proving what is acceptable. Proving. You mentioned earlier. Uh, First Peter, be holy as I'm holy. It's almost like when we was talking right before we got started with Nicole. It was you was encouraging her, you know, first time being on the set, you know, relax. I'm not gonna let you fail. That's right. And that's how God did. He was he was showing this connection with us. I got you covered. I, I'm not gonna let you fail if you follow my instructions. I laid it out, I called you, you connected to me. Do what I say do, and you are the word guy. I will work everything out all right. Do what I say. I love that. Connect. Prove. You should have some proof 
of who you are in God. Right? Right. It's right. like you can talk. You know, we, we say this all the time. Oh, this, this old preacher, right? You say, um, you know, just because you sit in church don't mean you're Christian. And you hear preachers you preacher say, used to say that, well, I can sit in the garage all day, but I'm not a car. You know, you got no proof. All you do is sit in church, but you got no proof. All you do is walk around with your church stuff, but you got no proof. Hit number, hit verse 11. Uh, cool. Verse 11, I'm reading from the Amplified. Okay. It says, do not participate in the worthless and unproductive deeds of darkness. Jesus. But instead expose them by exemplifying personal integrity, moral courage, and godly character. Wow, wow. So let's yes. unpack that for us. What do you think it's saying to you there? Well, it says, do not participate in the worthless and unproductive deeds of darkness, but expose them. Um, worthless and unproductive. Yeah. Okay, good. Let's talk about that. <laughs> so Worth by exemplifying personal integrity, I am light. So if I am walking in God's light, my light is automatically going to expose the, mm -hmm. the worthless deeds of darkness. Um, walking in that light, being an example, being an imitator of God. Just your life itself, when you walk in the room, will expose the darkness that's in that room or wherever you may be. So, so let me take them. We're going to all close up on verse 13 tonight. But I want you to see, that was great what you said. But all things, when they are reproved, are made manifest. So God is saying all things. Okay, so what I'll do is, you know, Nicole over there showing off in her translation. Let me let me go to the let me let me go to the message translation. <laughs> it says, starting at verse he said in verse seven. This is the message translation. Don't waste your time on useless work, mere busy work. Or the dark thing, or pursue things of darkness. Here's what it says. Ex uh -huh. oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I, you gotta hear what I'm hearing say next. Expose these things for the sham they are. It's just a sham. It's just a scam. It's a sham. All this stuff you think you're doing is keeping you from God. We're gonna close tonight on this thing. Walk. We're talking about walk in love and your walk in power. Walk above all. But we just talked about some things we need to expose in our life. So. If you want to have the inheritance, if you want to have some proof, right? let's look at these verses. If you want to do, God says you got to expose these things. But here's what God said: they're going to be made manifest, even if you don't. Oh, yes, sir. They're going to be exposed. Uh -huh. Sometimes that exposure is in your tears. That exposure is in getting no better. That exposure is in doing everything you want to do. We're trying to tell you, Paul said, this is how you get blessed. You can keep doing everything you want to do and act like, you know, I don't have to answer God, but it will be exposed and the manifestation can be, man, your life ain't getting no better. It won't get any better till you come to God. Right now, somebody needs to pray because the Holy Spirit hit on something as we close. Hit on unforgiveness. It hit on walk in love, how we treat people, what we do. Then it talked about how do you maintain your vessel. So there's some things separating you from God. You want to just get scriptures and hear preaching and run around, but you don't want to change into those things. And um, Akima said it, we're being translated. Pastor Max said it, we're, we're, we're all like these levels are being peeled from us. Each week, this stuff is going to get gooder and gooder. I'm telling you, we're going to pick up here and we're going to go into a an understanding of, we think this is a, a marriage chapter. It's really not. It, it's, it, at the end of this, we're going to find out how God said we apply these is that he used marriage so we can talk about how Christ loves the church. So with all of this happening, we're going to end this chapter with God's love in our life. And if we didn't have the love of God, we could not be here at all. All right, last word. Any last word, Nicole, you want to say tonight when we close up? Anything you want to just say to somebody listening that you might have just felt that you want to say before we close tonight? Anything? Yes, I just want to say, uh, even if you fall. Even if you fall. I like that. Even if you fall, get back up. Okay. Praise God. That's all I have to say. That's good. No, that's enough. Go ahead, Kim. Any last words? Um, I would say God loves you, and there are some things you just got to let go. Let go. Wow. That's good. Let go. Yes, man. God has no respect of a person. What he's done for one, he's done for others. And the last thing I'd say is, now you know. I need you to go forth and do what the Bible said, not us, 
what this word says, and you will be blessed. This is Pastor Duncan saying thank you. Tune back in next week. We're going to finish this chapter, and Ephesians chapter 5 is exciting. Wait till we get to 6, spiritual warfare. God bless you.